Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for the third in our four-part series webinar on growing your business online. Today's focus is going to be all about how to get yourself found online. A reminder, today's session is hopefully full of great information for you, but you should consider your own personal circumstances before implementing any of the things that you've heard about. Well, today is really exciting uh, because our third session, as we said, is all about getting your business found online. Uh, today, I'm joined by Google Australia uh, to talk about the, your expertise around the tips and tricks to get yourself found online. In particular, we're going to talk about how to create a free profile in Google Search and Google Maps and how you can connect with customers through Google Ads and get some really great analytics to help you with more informed decision making. To guide us through today's topic, I am delighted to welcome Tom O'Connor, Growth Specialist at Google. He's been there for about three years and his entire role is about how to make small and medium businesses successful using the Google tool set. Sit back, enjoy today's session and Tom, over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Karen, for the introduction. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Tom O'Connor, like Karen said, and I work as a growth specialist at Google. What that really means is that I help Aussie and Kiwi small businesses to be found online and make the most of their online advertising strategies. Today, we're going to be covering a couple of different topics, and I hope that the workshop today leaves you feeling inspired and excited to learn more and take the next steps to getting your business online. Firstly, we're going to touch on how to get your business found online with Google search and maps. We're then going to walk through how to reach new customers with online advertising via Google ads. And finally, we'll touch on how you can make better business decisions with Google analytics. So, Topic one is getting your business found on Google search and maps. Now I'm sure a few of you on the call already have a Google My Business profile and so we'll keep this first topic relatively light. We're gonna walk through what a business profile is, how you can use your profile to easily connect with customers, and finally a couple of quick steps so that you can get started if you don't have a profile already. So to kick things off, we're going to take a look at a short video that introduces Google My Business. Awesome. So as you can see, people are making searches all the time on Google for things they want or need. And a Google My Business profile helps you and your business appear for those potential customers. So let's start by looking at what a business profile is. Now, when a customer discovers your business profile, the first thing they'll see is a business overview, like we see here for Lost in Books, a bookstore based in Fairfield, Sydney. Here customers can take actions like visiting your website, calling your business or getting directions. And they can also view your opening hours and reviews left by previous customers. Now, let's imagine we want to visit Lost in Books. We might search for them on Google Maps and we can find their address. But imagine if they didn't have a business profile. How would people find them? Well, every month, people are making billions of local searches on Google, and now 30% of searches on mobile devices relate to locations. So as the customer journey is getting more complex with more devices, 
it's really important that you as a business show up in those moments that matter. So how can a business profile actually help your business? Well, as we've said, in an online marketplace with increasing noise, it's really important to cut through that and appear when someone is searching for your business, your products, or your services. A couple of quick wins though are that one, it can help your business to appear more credible. You can influence people to buy from you and encourage previous customers to return. And thirdly, and most importantly, it is completely free. So we now have a bit of a feel for what a business profile is. I'm sure that you've all seen a lot of them previously from bakeries, plumbers, butchers, hairdressers. Let's now walk through a couple of really easy features that you can use to actually connect with customers through your business profile. So the first is that you can send and receive direct messages through your business profile, just like you would a text message. This is a great way to have one-on-one -on -one and very easy communication with customers. You can turn on the messaging feature. You can also turn it off and add automated responses at any time. Another really important way that you can use your business profile to communicate with customers is by responding to reviews. Now, obviously this is a great way to build customer loyalty, but it's also a really important way for you to demonstrate the way that you respond to customer feedback. And so an important call out here is that the timeliness and professionalism of your responses is really, really important. Don't be put off if you receive a negative or constructive response. Think about why the customer left that response. And if there's an explanation, it's always best to address it so that others can see the scenario from your perspective. It's important that you know that you actually can't remove reviews. However, explicit content comments will be automatically removed and you can always file a request to have a review removed if it's unwarranted or untrue. Another really great feature of having a business profile is what we call posts. And so here you can share information that is unique to your business, like offers, updates, and events. For example, you might want to update your customers on COVID safe protocols, unique store opening hours, or new business offerings. If you decide to set up a business profile on Google, or maybe you already have one, this is a really great feature to help you stand out. And finally, it's really one of the best ways to communicate with customers is photos. Not only is that a great way to add a layer of personalization and authenticity to your business profile, but we know that customers are 90% more likely to visit a business from a profile that has photos. And so it's a great way to enrich the overall experience in your brand through your business profile, which again is completely free. It's important that you know that both you and customers can add photos, although if there's a photo that you don't like or you'd like removed, you can always file a request to have that done. So we know what a business profile is. We've got a bit of a flavor for how you can use that to engage with customers. And I bet you're now thinking, well, if you don't have a profile, how can I sign up? Before we run through that, in relatively quick detail, it's important to know that a profile can only be created if your business has a physical presence. And that can include one of two things. Firstly, you've got a location that customers can visit. So let's say a bakery. Or secondly, you go to visit customers in person. So let's think a plumber. Now, if your business doesn't fit one of those two categories, it's going to be unlikely that you can actually set up a business profile, although there always are exceptions. So if you want to give it a crack, I definitely recommend it. So the Google My Business website takes you through the simple steps to set up a profile if you don't already have one. And that can be found at google.com forward slash business, after which you'll just follow the prompts. So that's section one. Again, relatively light. I'm sure that a number of you already have a business profile. And for those that don't, again, head to google.com forward slash business to get started. That was all about, well, how can we get started on our online advertising journey? How can we be found online? 
When we want to take that to the next level and begin to actually reaching new customers, that's when we think about online advertising with Google Ads specifically. There are a couple of things that we'll cover as part of this second topic. The first is that we'll run through why Australian small businesses are going digital and how they're using the tools and technologies available to them to connect with customers in the moments that matter. We'll then run through the different campaign types that are available within Google Ads so that you can reach your customers and achieve your business goals. And finally, we'll walk through smart campaigns, which is a great way to get started by using a very automated and smart technology campaign type. So as we all know, the rate of change that's coming on from digital is exponential. And what that means is that customer journeys are changing drastically. In fact, in the last five years alone, 80% of Australians have shopped online. And that has really important implications for Aussie small businesses. We know that there has never been a better time for small businesses to be online. And those businesses that are leveraging digital tools and technologies are finding more efficient ways to reach their customers, showcase their products, expand into new markets, and most importantly, measure the results. Digital ads give businesses hundreds, if not thousands of opportunities every single day to connect with customers as they're looking for products or services that relate to their business. And the great thing is, all you need is a smartphone and an internet connection to get started. So even businesses that are in remote or regional communities can get found online with relative ease. Now, there are a multitude of reasons that businesses are heading online. Interestingly, though, a recent report by the Deloitte Connected Small Business uh, Foundation found that those Aussie small businesses that are pursuing high touch digital engagement are one and a half times more likely to be growing revenue, seven times more likely to be exporting and eight times more likely to be hiring, which during COVID-19 and the pandemic has never been more important, yet only 10% of Australian small businesses are actually taking the necessary steps to, uh, to meet this sort of potential. So let's turn our attention to connecting with customers in moments that matter. Think about the last thing you searched for online. What was the experience like for you as a consumer? Did you find what you were looking for? Did you find it easily, quickly? And the reason that this is important is because that journey is becoming more and more complex, which means more opportunities for you as a business, but also a couple more challenges or hurdles in getting there. So the reason that search is a really important vehicle as part of this overall process is that by the time you've read this slide, 500,000 people have asked Google a question, which is crazy because when we take that statistic over minutes, days, hours, we begin to understand the scale of opportunity and customers that are out there just waiting to connect with your business. It's also important because all of these searches are backed by intent. So I want to know something, I want to discover something new, I want to do something, I want to go somewhere, or I want to buy something in particular. And so again, if we take these micro moments that matter and we apply them to your business, it's a really powerful opportunity, not just to show up for a lot of potential customers, but to show up for customers that are looking for your exact product or service. So something that I encourage businesses that I work with to do is to think about the types of questions that your customers might be asking. That could be questions that they ask when you're in your, in your store, maybe on the phone. And rather than focusing on what you want your customers to know, reposition your profile and online marketing strategy to focus on what they want to know so that you can show up in these micro moments and be truly relevant to what they're looking for. Now, as I've said, really today, people aren't just going online, they're living online. 
And that's not just a compelling soundbite, it's actually what the data tells us. In fact, a recent report found that the average Aussie is spending six hours and 42 minutes online every single day, which is a lot of time. And what that means again for you as a business is that there is a ton of opportunity to engage with these customers in those moments that matter. So all that time online, and I've alluded to this, is meaning that customer journeys are getting increasingly complex. And for businesses, this is an opportunity, but also a challenge. And that's because customers are so deeply connected to the web. But it's not a linear or very straightforward connection like it once was. There are so many different ways to go online, browse online, access information across devices, and that results in a pretty muddled customer journey. And so if we take an example here, let's think that my fridge broke and my food is no longer cold. I search for tutorials on how to fix a fridge. I read an article um, and then visit a website or a store to find prices for sockets, ratchets, and wire cutters. I then go to YouTube and I watch a DIY video on how to fix a clogged coil. Realize that it's probably a, a little bit tough. I don't actually know what I'm doing. And so I go to Google search to then look for a local handyman or handywoman who can do it for me and finally make a booking through Gmail. That's just one example of the very, very complex customer journey that we're seeing, um, which again is important for you as a business to think about because it has a really important impact in which moments we want to show for or that maybe we want to show for more than just one. So now that we have a better understanding of the complex customer journey, why Aussie small businesses are going online, let's now take a look at how Google Ads can help you get there. And again, to reiterate, to get started, think about your business profile. This is sort of the next step or building block, which is when we really want to go to the next level and reach new customers. So Google Ads is an online advertising platform that allows businesses to advertise their products and services across search, YouTube, and other sites across the web. There are a couple of different campaign types that we'll be running through today. Before we dive in though, a really quick overview on each. So search ads help your business appear when a user or potential customer has typed in a query that is relevant to your business. So let's think buy flowers online. Shopping ads are ads that appear on the results page as well, but with a product title image uh, and they, they appear for retail businesses specifically. So that could be me searching for blue running shoes. Display ads are image or banner ads that appear across websites on the internet. So typically blogs, newspaper, news, newspaper websites, etc. And finally, Google video ads are those videos that run at the start, during and after advertisements or videos that you might be watching on YouTube. So the first and by far the most popular ad format is Google search campaigns. And if we think it's why it's the most popular, I mean, when we go back to just the number of searches that are happening every second and that these searches are backed by intent and people that are, that are wanting to know, go, do, buy, it's a really powerful way for you to connect with customers that are in the market for your product or service. Now, when someone searches on Google, these Google ads will appear at the top of the search results page and they'll have that little ad icon next to them so that you know a brand is paying to be there. So in this example, there might be fridge repair service businesses that are appearing after I've typed in fridge repairs near me. Now, it's really important that you know that ads will only appear for relevant searches. So if, for example, you're a business, you can pick the exact search queries that you want to show for to make sure that we're being targeted and very intentional about the type of users or potential customers that we're showing up for. So 
I mean, in other words, if I'm selling running shoes, there's no way that I could show my ad for someone that is searching for fridge repairs near me. Now, the amazing thing about search campaigns is that unlike newspapers, flyers, billboards, or other forms of non-digital marketing, you only pay per click. What that actually means is that you will only pay if a potential customer clicks on your ad or calls your business from your ad. And what that means is that if your ad's appearing but not being clicked on, it's essentially operating like a free virtual billboard, which is really powerful. Further, there is no minimum spend required and you can start with a spend level that is comfortable for you and within your monthly, daily, fortnightly marketing budget. You can learn more about this at the FAQ section of the Google Ads website, which we'll be sharing a link to at the end of today's workshop. So this is another example of how search campaign ads appear. If we look at the two ads here, they look pretty similar, except when we look a little bit further, we realize that the second one is quite a bit bigger uh, in, in terms of size and has a lot more blue text. And that's because the second ad is using what we call extensions. Extensions are a really powerful way for you to add more information to your search ads, which is great, not only because it maximizes your real estate on Google search, but also because it increases the likelihood that a user will click on your ad. These are optional extras, by no means do you need to add them, but they are free to add. So that is ad format one. Now we'll move into ad format two which is called Google Shopping Campaigns. And these are also available through the Google Ads interface. Now, these are more than just a text ad. As we can see here for refrigerators, you can see a price, an image, a title, and the brand name. And so shopping ads in particular are only available to retailers that sell a physical product. The great thing about shopping ads is that they are like search pay per click, which means you're only paying when a user clicks on your shopping ad. And as with all campaign types on Google ads, you get to control the budget and have full flexibility with the spend level that you commit to. The third ad format is what we call Google display campaigns. So this is also run through Google ads, but it's quite different to search and shopping campaigns in that they're not text ads, but they're actually image or banner ads that don't appear when someone searches, but that appear across 90% of websites on the internet. So again, think blog posts, news articles, all those sorts of websites is a really great opportunity for you to serve an ad to a customer that might be in market for your product or service, but ha actually hasn't typed it into the Google search bar. These ads are typically better if you're wanting to build awareness or consideration around your product range, as opposed to just capturing those users that are already searching for your product or service. The fourth and final ad format is what we call Google video campaigns, which like display campaigns are a really effective driver of awareness and consideration. These appear at the start, the middle and the end of videos that are watched on YouTube. The reason this is so powerful now is that more than 16 million Australians are logged into YouTube every month and for an average of 30 plus hours per month. So if you're a business that has an awesome store, customer test testimonials, footage of your employees, whatever it might be, YouTube could be a really great vehicle for you to share that with people that again, are interested in the content, products or services that your business might offer. So for this next section, we'll, un we'll help you understand of all the different campaign types we've just run through, how you can begin to figure out what one might be best for your particular business and your business goals. The way that we recommend you do that is by essentially coming up with really stringent advertising goals. A couple examples that we have here are sales, leads, 
website traffic, product and brand consideration, awareness and reach, or if you're an app-based business, app promotion. If we drill into that a little bit further, and I'm sure a few of you on the, on the workshop today would have seen this, a good goal is one that's smart. So it's specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's relevant, and it's time sensitive. So when it comes to thinking about what sort of goal you'd like to go after and in turn, what campaign is going to be best for you, start with a SMART goal and that will then help to determine which campaign you begin with. As a rule of thumb, if your goal is to drive sales or leads like phone calls or form submissions, we recommend starting with search campaigns or shopping campaigns if you have a product. Or if you're wanting to build a little bit more awareness, launch into a new market, custom, uh, target a new customer base or demographic, that's when display and video campaigns can be really, really effective. So there's one final campaign type that we haven't yet discussed, and that's smart campaigns. These campaigns are designed for ease of use and have very low ongoing maintenance, which is great for busy, you know, small business owners that have a million and one things on their plate, this could be a really great way for you to get started with online advertising on Google Ads. So this is really the solution, as I've said, for small businesses. And that's because they're automated versions of the Google search, display and shopping campaigns we've just run through. Essentially, all of the work is automated, powered by the best of Google's machine learning technology. And what that does is it frees up time for you as a busy business owner to work on other parts of your business. So for example, you don't need to create keyword lists. So thinking about what sort of queries you'd like to show for, because that's automatically done for you based on the content on your website, the business category you select, and any other information you provide to the Google Ads system. So it's pretty simple and takes really just about 15 minutes. All we ask is that you enter a couple of keyword themes and like we said, based on the type of business you have, Google will show your ad to users that are searching for your products and services specifically. So the steps involved, it's one, select a campaign goal. So again, that could be sales, leads, awareness, consideration. It's secondly, to decide on a target location, which can be as specific as a particular postcode. You then need to describe your product or service. So that could be a yoga studio, for example. You then begin to write your ad. And here it's important to think about what makes your business unique. And if your ad's showing up against another yoga studio, what can you include in yours to really set yourself apart? And then finally, you'll set a budget that you're comfortable with and you're good to go. So it's really, really simple, but there are a couple of extra things that you can do in order to get the most out of your smart campaign. The first is to schedule your ad. So by default, your ads are scheduled to run all the time, but you actually have the option to select days of the week and times of days where your ads will show. This is especially important if you're a lead generation based business that might be accepting phone calls, but only doing that during office or opening hours. Another optimization you can make is actually toggling on and off between the different queries that might trigger your ads to show. So while you can't put in keywords or queries, you can remove those that are recommended by the system. And so here we can see turning off yoga mats, which if I'm a yoga studio and don't actually have a store associated with that, I wouldn't want to show for yoga mats because that's not a product that's relevant to my particular business. And finally, you can enable verified calls through your smart campaigns, which is really important so that you can get more data and more learnings about the type of customers that are calling your business. So that in could include the time of day, call duration, or where they're located. So to recap, you can get started on all that we've discussed today by going to ads.google.com. 
And here you have the opportunity to advertise across search, display, shopping, and video campaigns. If you're a little bit confused or overwhelmed or don't know exactly where to start, then smart campaigns are a fantastic starting point given that most of the setup and the ongoing maintenance is taken care by the Google Ads system itself. So that's section one on a business profile and section two on getting started with online advertising. The whole other piece of the puzzle, which is just as, if not as important, is making better business decisions with analytics. And so as part of this section, we'll run through how you can actually use data to drive business growth, how you can outline business goals as part of that process, ask the right questions, and finally choose the right analytics tools to answer those questions and in turn, hit your business goals. So I'd like to introduce you to Tra Tracy and Danny. In 2010, they took a cake decorating class. Their passion became a business and their first store opened in October, 2011. Now, as their reputation grew, they received hundreds of shipping requests, but they couldn't find a way to ship cupcakes and have them arrive fresh and intact. And that's when they came up with their big idea, which was cupcakes in glass jars. And so by filling the jar with layers of cake, frosting and filling, the cupcake stays fresh for 10 days without refrigeration. So new spread. And in 2013, Tracy and Danny actually appeared on Shark Tank in front of more than 10 million viewers on the ABC network. Wicked Good Cupcakes was born and that became the go-to site for baked goods online. Now, they're gonna be accompanying us on our journey through the data and analytics world today. Um, and so we'll show how they use data to reach their goals and in turn, how you can use it to reach yours. So Tracy and Danny made a few decisions based on gut instincts, and that can be great. Sometimes that works, but it's usually better to base business decisions based on data. <clears throat> so the bottom line is business decisions are less risky if we have data to support them. And so a couple of gut instinct decisions that Tracy and Danny made were, one, they experimented with a new recipe, their customers loved it, they immediately added it to the recipe or to the menu. They cut prices when sales were down, and they also assumed that their target audience was women aged 35 to 54. So in order to make this process as simple as possible, we've come up with a three-step plan. The first is outline your business goals. What are you trying to achieve? The second is to ask the questions that you need to know in order to hit these goals. And finally, it's using the right tools to help you answer those questions and in turn, hit your business goals. So step one, outline business goals. And as I'm running through this section, maybe have a think about a business goal that you'd like to hit. Keeping in mind it needs to be smart, which is specific, measurable, attainable, timely. So here we have their goal to decrease shopping cart abandonment to under 60% by the end of the month. So it's specific, it relates to cart abandonment. It's measurable, it involves a number. It's attainable because prior to that it was 70%. It's relevant because the less people that are abandoning their shopping cart, the more that will be actually purchasing. And finally, it's time sensitive because it's by the end of next month. So again, when it comes to coming up with really specific, smart goals for your business, make sure they hit these five attributes because when it comes to actually finding the data to help you hit them, the job will be made a lot easier. So again, what are your goals? Maybe write them down if you've got a notepad or type them up on a, on a computer if that's easier. Thinking about number of leads. So how many phone calls would I like to get next, next week? or maybe around foot traffic, if you're lucky enough to be out of lockdown and have your store open. Appointment bookings, app downloads, online sales, 
There's a ton of different goals that could relate to your small business. So again, have a think and try to bring as much structure to those goals as possible. By this point, hopefully we've got a goal and then it's smart. And once we've got that goal, the next step is to begin to ask questions to help us frame that and begin to find the data and analytics to help us answer them. There are a couple of different buckets or categories of questions that we recommend you ask, one for each stage of the customer journey. The reach stage relates to how a potential customer finds out about your business. So that's who is your audience? How do you reach them? How are they actually learning about Lost in Books, for example, the bookstore in Fairfield, Sydney? The second category of questions is what we call engage questions. And that's related to, can they find the answers that they're looking for when they're on your website? The third category is convert. So do those potential customers that are browsing your website actually become customers? Or do they call your business or at least take the next step in that user journey? And finally, sustain. So do those one-time customers become loyal customers? Again, after this workshop today, maybe start with one of these four buckets. We don't need to tick off all four to begin with, but start with engage or sustain or convert or whatever is most relevant for your particular business and begin to ask a couple of questions that you would like answered. The reason that's so important is because once we have those questions, we're gonna be in a far better position to choose the analytics tools and the types of reports that you use in order to answer them. The way that we recommend you do this is called Google Analytics, and you can get access to this by going to google.com forward slash analytics. So this is a free tool, just like Google My Business, and it's one of the most popular website analytics tools available. It helps you as a business owner understand your customer experience a little bit better. Now, in order to use Google Analytics, you do need to have a website. So there are five different types of reports that we're gonna quickly run through now. And again, the idea of this part of the workshop is not that you go away and you use all five reports for every type of question. It's just about picking out one report that sounds interesting or helpful and using that to answer one bucket of question. So the first is real time, and that gives you an insight into what is happening right now on my website. That could include how many people are on my website right now? What pages are they looking at? Where have they come from? Where are they leaving? And so again, this is a really powerful insight into not, not what just what's happening right now, but let's say you've logged a blog post. You can then jump right onto your website and measure the uplift in traffic in real time. The second is acquisition reports. So this is about where do my customers come from? And as a business, if you know where your customers are coming from, you can prioritize that channel or that means of marketing so that you can actually grow your customer base. And so interestingly, if we go back to Wicked Good Cupcakes, they found that a lot of their customers were coming through referrals. And so off the back of that, they decided to launch a loyalty program so that they could build their referral base further. The next type is audience. So this is about who visits your website. And again, if you can get a clearer understanding as to the type of customers that are using your website and engaging with your content, you can then tailor your products and services to make them as relevant as possible. If we go back to Wicked Good Cupcakes, again, they assumed that their target audience was women aged 35 to 54. In fact, it was 25 to 34. And so if we think about then a younger demographic, that might influence the type of website that they create or the different recipes that they experiment with. The fourth type of report is behavior, which is what do people do on the website? This is a really interesting report that allows you to actually analyze what page people are moving between, 
um, and how they're engaging with the different content on your website in particular. So again, this could include, well, page ABC has a really high rate of people leaving. So what do we need to change on that particular page to make the content more compelling and to ensure that more people stay on the site? Or maybe if you have a couple of different pages for different services that your dentist offers, and there's one particular page where the majority of people then go to the contact tab, you know that that's a really efficient page in getting people to actually reach out to the business. And finally, we have conversions. So a conversion is an action that is valuable to your business and typically it relates to your goals. So that could include leads, awareness, sales, appointments, etc. And this really tells you, is your website doing what it's intended to do? Because while it's great to have a lot of traffic and people visiting your website, if they're not actually taking the action that you want, it's never going to be as effective as it could. And so by using your conversion reports in Google Analytics, you'll get a really great taste for which parts of my website are most successful or what particular age group is converting the highest or what do I need to do in order to drive up the proportion of users on my website that are actually calling the business. So hopefully we've got a bit of a taste for how you can begin to use data and analytics to actually inform your business decision making. There are a ton of different resources. There's many different avenues that you can take, but my recommendation to you would be one, outline your goals and make sure that they are smart. So that is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time sensitive. Once you've got those goals, ask the questions that you need to know in order to hit them. And there's a couple of different buckets. Again, you don't need to start with all four. You might pick reach or engage to begin with. Thirdly, it's about choosing the right reports within the Google Analytics tool to help you answer those questions. So if I'm thinking about engage questions, which are all about the behavior of users, I might be using a behavior report in Google Analytics to help answer them. And finally, it's about measuring your results and taking action. Your gut instinct decisions, again, are sometimes right, they're sometimes not, but business decisions are better and safer when they're backed by data. So to wrap up all of these three sessions, I'd like to share a few more links that might help you continue your learning. Again here, there's a ton of different resources. Feel free to take a screenshot or a photo of this slide so that you can visit them in your own time. Um, a couple of great ones though, is the Grow With Google Australia website, which has a lot more resourcing. We have a Google for small business website. Um, and again, the one thing that you should start today if you haven't already is creating your online profile by going to google.com forward slash business. Amazing, Tom. Thank you so much. A presentation full of very uh, good tips and tricks. There's loads in there. Um, what I really loved about that, again, is, you know, really focusing on the moments that matter for your customers, really knowing what they're after and talking in their language. And so amazing. Uh, so thank you very much. Really appreciate everybody joining us today.